Matthew chapter 13. Bless your holy word, Lord. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good soil and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. And I thank you for the promise and that you gave me a name from 1997. Thank you, Jesus. My Heavenly Father has spoken to me the two most profound times. Uh, Daughter, I love you through the rivers of living water in 2008 or 9. I've been the early part of And I needed it. And then uh, the other time was 1997. I needed it. Good soil. And I did get to be good soil for a seven year period after that. From 1997 to 2004. And then, je ne sais pas. Except that uh, there was a wicked plot, very lengthy wicked plot. That has not stopped, and I retain the sins of the DJs before God's holy court and lose his righteous judgment upon them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. He who has an ear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall it be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross. And I've just been watching the judgment on New Jersey because uh, there was no fire on the wax. So God had to plead my case again. And only by virtue of what you did that you made it so enormous and involved so many people that the judgment he meets out has to be so enormous. Repent. I claim every soul that is a conversion of the appropriation experiment for Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit conviction on all of them, most especially those in conversion because they don't have any intent but for those that have intent and continue. I pray for them as my enemies because even they wouldn't want you to see how or experience the hell you're causing in my life. <clears throat> for the people heart, people's heart is gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Uh, Jesus is saying he doesn't want them to hear. Because these people whose hearts have waxed gross, who love the concept of wax, he doesn't want them to see want them to repent. 
He wants them to burn. That's what he's saying here in Matthew 13, 15. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see these things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear these things which you hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth the way that which, he was, which was sown in his heart. This is he which he received the seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth, yet hath he no root in himself, but endureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares. I retain the sin of summer for God's holy court, because that's not even a tear. That's not even a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's much worse. So I retain the sins of that. Uh, it was in an infinity. Because that's important this time for me. Dogs and cars. <laughs> I know the dogs and cars. I don't know why we're repeating this lesson. But anyway. I retain. Your, you are not infinite. You are finite. The only one who is infinite is Elohim, who has condemned you already. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to command your mighty angels to bind that into hell, away from St. Clair Church, in the name of Jesus. Bind it right now. Lose your righteous judgment upon it, which is already a condemnation. Amen. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, that which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. Hallelujah. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus saith unto them, Have you understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished, and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and the, these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sister, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. I'd also like the Karaite to uh, translate from Matthew 13, 55 to 57 uh, to see if um, we can dispel the controversy here because there's some controversy. 
Additionally, uh, uh, anyway, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. I don't want to get into. Um, I loved my amplified Bible because it has a thesaurus built in. And ow, ow, I learned a lot from it. And that time Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist, he is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. <coughs> for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in the prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at need, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison, and his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place, apart. And when the people heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the village and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give you them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship, and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit! And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O oh, thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they... They that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of the place had the knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about, and brought unto him all that were diseased, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Praise you, Jesus.